yeah, we out here with the homeboy Tweezy. You yeah. Know? How you pronounce it? Uh, oh, Fuego. Fuego. Yeah, Fuego. Fuego. Yeah. Fuego. Like, like it's got a W on it. Fuego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, man, firstly, thank you for creating the anthem. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, just when we thought you'd done creating the remix, Ambition. Mm -hmm. That's a dope track, man. Firstly, I mean, what, for me, I just want to know, man, because we're going to get into your songs, play your songs. Mm -hmm. This is like a, a sneak preview of, um, of, of what Fuego. Yeah, Fuego. Fuego's <laughs> going to sound like it's not even complete. Chances are, by the time it even goes out, maybe some of these songs won't even be in the album. Ah, they will be. It's like 80% in. Yeah. 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 All right. So, this is it. No release date yet. <laughs> highly, highly exclusive. Yeah. Highly exclusive. With the homeboy Tweezy. Gonna play some of the songs. But, key thing for me, you know, you've obviously, you just have done some amazing work from production. Mm -hmm. I want to firstly just get into experiences, you know, I mean, who, when you get in studio, you look forward to work with? I mean, I look forward to spending more time with artists than producers these days because, I mean, as producers, we've, we've got times where we share tricks and whatever when it comes to making beats and whatever, but, I mean, I'm at a point where in my career, I'm trying to be a better artist than a better producer, you know, because as a producer, I feel like there's a couple of things that I've done and I've pretty much almost touched the ceiling as a producer and as an artist I've only just been introduced to the game so there's so much I can do I mean I'm not even afraid of fucking up I'm not afraid of being called wag being criticized in a negative way because I feel like there's so much more I can do and learn so I'm always finding myself in studio with artists when they record, trying to learn Veluguto, okay, where's their mind at? What are they trying to portray? How are they trying to communicate their message Yeah, well, to another person who's going to be listening to the song? So, yeah. So now, you know, you got a, you got a, I mean, your, 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 your experience with a lot of artists in studio is very rich. How many artists have you been in studio with that have, that have used your beats? And how many have you just like, just sent the beats are you always in studio for all your beats and for all the beats that guys rap on you know before and this was like 2014 times i used to send out beats but uh borderline 2015 to 16 i found myself wanting to be in studio because i grew from being just a composer to a producer whereas instead of just sending you the beats and expecting a dope song now i direct the song and, and i make sure that the song is dope so I mean, this all started when I did Lyalakayona with uh, Tito. Yeah. So he'd come through to the crib. Uh, obviously, I had laced the, the hook and we shaped it together. And then he'd write a verse. I'd tell him, nah, this is not working out. This is almost there, whatever the case is. And then at the end, it's like, okay, it's working out. It's both of our contributions making this great song. Mm. So after seeing the feedback of the song, Velo Guto okay, it's such a well-received song. and. As a producer, it's a success, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I figured out, you know what, let me try this a bit more and mm -hmm. gain more experience. So I did it with Fifi Cooper, MT, Chat the Dons, pretty much everyone else that I've produced for in terms of compositions mm -hmm. in the game so far. Rouge, all those people. All those people, yeah. yeah. So when you're in the studio, I mean, I mean yeah. this is it's real because it is what it is. Which artists are the most open to, to input, you know, with regards to, okay, I'm listening to you here. And because some guys are stuck in the way, like, I know this works, mm -hmm. you know? Just with the guys you've been in the studio with. Yeah. It's probably the guys you look forward to working with also. Yeah. I mean, more than anything, like, and it, it only makes sense because as Khotmani in the game that's been doing it for some time, I mean, you pretty much have a formula that works out for you. And if there's someone coming to switch up the formula, it's not very easy for you to give in to that formula. You know, so it, it's much more simple for a new school kid and myself to come up with something from start and not having them be insecure and say, okay, sharp, this is my formula, I'm not trying to mess up the formula. You know, and I think, I mean, it's, it's a catch-22 because as much as you can't temper with someone else's formula, there's something that you're learning from them. And also with them, they, they're not learning from me. 
so it's a tricky situation but i mean it works out either way i mean it's just all about the energy and how well you communicate with the artist so to be correct it's a simple thing of um the ogs literally come with a lot they that they already know which is hard to turn the younger guys literally are like it's all like an experiment you yeah, guys mm. getting together so yeah. that's, that's more what it is yeah because also as a, as a new school i mean you've got you've got so much to do i mean you're at a point where people don't even know what your sound is they just know that okay you're the hottest guy out and you've got dope songs so at that point you've got the chance to experiment and do whatever you want whereas i'll make an, an example and say maybe a black lens yeah. uh a black lens is on that conscious street rap type of thing and yeah who's in a public company and i have all men's and chippies you know because some of the fans might not take that in a very comfortable manner you know so it's very tricky but i mean at the end of the day it's just finding ways to make it work out yeah okay okay that's dope i mean i'm gonna get into like um hugo you know uh, we're gonna get into a joint right now um i just want to get into your headspace but i think now that you are in studio making songs do you feel like uh how do how are the rappers taking it you know are they are they are they still approaching you to go yo we still need beats from you are they seeing as competition how's the feeling now that like you like saying yo I'm, i also want that same spot that you are you know yeah. like if that's the number one spot you yeah, know I mean? yeah 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 i hear your one line and you go you want to you say something about like you have an ambition of being like at a position like aka mm-hmm. i mean how's i mean and i'm using him as a rapper how every other rapper taking it versus the time when you actually weren't even chasing that rap ambition i won't even lie man like ever since i decided to be an artist not even just amongst rappers just as people I, i i've had a whole lot of negativity being thrown my way mm-hmm. you know i'm not sure whether it's because people just feel like i can't do it or it's just intimidation and being nervous of what i have to offer you know i mean at some point i i started getting less calls i mean even for from just the production space where i'll link up with a person in the club yo tweet yeah yeah so we're supposed to work yeah asian fana yeah but you're being an artist now you know so i think a lot of people between respecting the the movement that i'm trying to do for myself and being maybe somewhat intimidated by what i have to offer and now being against the person because as a producer you can never be against the rapper because you're competing i'm a producer yeah. yes i'm not com- like we're not in competition yeah whereas now when i'm coming through as an artist i've got an like a one up against every other rapper which is my beat yeah. you know so maybe people are a bit shaken by that and they're not but anyway man like I'm just trying to do my thing. I've always wanted to rap. I've always wanted to be a musician since I was like 8. You know, so I mean, I didn't come into the industry to start beefs and cause controversy with so and so and whatever. I've just got a dream and I'm on a mission, man, to make it come true. Yeah. And by whatever means, man, I'm gonna make it happen. Well, you know, you do come across like a person who is actually very stubborn. you know and, <laughs> and i'm saying this just from what i see I, yeah. i don't know you like that but um you do come across like a person who's very stubborn and head strong mm. you know um what do you have to lose if you don't make it yo that's a very tough question actually but i mean i've got myself to lose more than anything because every night when i go to bed i feel like there's a certain goal that i'm always chasing and if it's not chased like I don't even feel like I'm a human. I don't feel normal. Like I remember the one time when Tito came through to the house before we came up with like Alakayon. I pumped him like 50 beats, you know, and it was like, you know what? All these beats are dope, but it's not the one. And I go back to bed like, okay, this is me losing my moments. This is, you know, and I, I don't feel comfortable. Like I feel like I'm losing something. So, as a person, I just don't like feeling like um at a point where i can't make shit happen or i can't achieve shit because i'm i'm just so ambitious that's just my character you know i, I can't allow myself to be okay with failing you know so i mean if i don't make like there's no such a thing as i won't make it i will make it i will be number one it's just a matter of time mm-hmm. yeah so how's home like where's home 
Home is Echangalala, Soweto. Um, well, I'm actually Devon born, man, and I moved up to Echangalala after the passing of my parents. And yeah, pretty much my entire life in Jay was. I was raised in Jablani amongst quite all stars, about Mandos and about Zola and everything. Because Khotman La Miltalu Small uh, was like one of the writers for Ichisko back in the oh, day. He yeah. was supposed to be in Ichisko, matter of fact. Hey. But then Wakanga uh, for some time and then he went to jail. So when hey. they were popping, he was in the cell. Hey, shout, yeah, out to Khotman. shout out to Khotman, man. Yeah. And you know, he was just that one guy in Guinea who used to write raps, it draw, as Mamili Si Kwaitoyak and stuff. So, he was the influence in music in Kinyabo and just looking up to him as a good man, I was just like, yo, I want to be like this guy one day. And then he's the guy bringing up and Abobol and Aboban I was just like, look, man, I need to be like these guys when I grow up. Yeah. So do you feel that, like, I mean, obviously you're which I never knew your parents passed away. So, like, um, did you, was your brother, your biological brother, the only person your bi- with your biological brother? He's actually a cousin. Uh, I've got a biological sister that's pretty much my mother figure, you know? And my entire life, really, it's just been us two because we find certain situations where there's a challenge at home, trust fund, I can't go to school, and my sister needs to ditch school and go get a job so that she can take care of me. I'm going to an expensive school in Shawai Adolosa and Tinya Pap. I'm thinking to music in Yafela. You know, so it's had its challenges, if I may say, you know, but I think the one blessing that came with everything is just my love for music. And that's why I take it as something important in my life, you know. Like, I don't fuck around with music. I respect it so much. Like, it's my everything. So that's what you have to That's what I have to do. That's what I was trying to say. That's what I was trying to step. Yeah. You know, uh, but besides the music, you've got a. It, it feels like, you know, um, you. And without you choosing, you've actually have to, you have to, you have to take care of yourself. Yeah. You have to be a man, you know, and and man up. And you like now you said you went to a school and failed, blah blah. You're literally saying I fucked up. Yeah. And like you're saying, this part of this music thing is is me saying I'm manning up. So anything that anyone else says in the industry, it, it doesn't matter because they don't know the real my my story. Pretty much, uh, it's bigger than rap. Yeah. Do you feel that to a certain extent also like now when you think of your cousin um, there's this dream that like you could have had um, with, with Chisco with Chisco and Mendoza and the guys do you feel that like um, you feel that you saw it never happen but you are gonna make it happen is yeah it, is that, does that also fuel you a little bit more I mean by any means like yeah that's pr- like one of the reasons why I'm not even backing down because it's not even my dream anymore. I mean, I've got people that believe in me so much more than I believe in myself. I mean, I've had images I may be so good and so so on ke echa plan, you know, where this no mkukunya and this busy taxi tiabo because it had no electricity. So I'd be there just making beats of my cousin's laptop. That's why I even made a couple of AKA beats. So they were the guys just like yo, it's just lamba one year, I'm fine. Don't worry, next year you pop it, man. You won't be something and. They used to push me literally every single day when I was at home and my sister was pretty much pushing me to get a job and she was just really nervous that I'm not going to amount to something in my life. And my friends were just like, look man, whatever you got going on, we believe in it and we know it's going to happen soon. So when it gets to a point where sometimes I get nervous and I believe, yo man, this song is not that dope or I'm not going to make it. I always have them in mind. Okay, if I quit now, not only am I letting myself down, but I've got people who've been pushing me for so many months, years, who want to see me up there, and they'll just be disappointed if I don't get there. You know.